But I need women that are going to be able to intercede. I need women that are going to be able to pray, to cover me, to teach me, to correct me in love. I'll say that one again, to correct me in love. Because... It's really dangerous <laughs> when you have folks around you that are yes men or yes women that agree with everything that you do, that agree with every decision you make, even when you're wrong. Mm-mm. That's not character building. That's reinforcing bad behavior. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. You all are tuned into another delightful and bright episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed. Every single week, we acknowledge Black creatives, entrepreneurs, businessmen, and women, and all of that good stuff. But today, I want to do something a little bit different. We know that Mother's Day is approaching, and today, I'm going to shout out my mama, Mrs. Mary Smith. And I just want to shout her out because she is such a super woman. Um, She is the life of the party. Every single room she walks in, she lights it up and she definitely is credited to the great contributions that she has given to me as her daughter and to the woman that I am evolving into. And so I just want to give a shout out to my own mother this Wednesday before our Mother's Day celebration. Um, And just a little bit extra because she is really outdoing herself with this whole wedding planning situation. Y'all, I thought we was, we were going to do a very small, you know, low, I don't want to say low scale. Mm, What's a better adjective? A modest, there we go. (laughs) A small, modest wedding celebration and ceremony. But when Mary Smith puts her hand and all of the other wonderful mothers put their hands on things. It just becomes more than you expected. So I'm literally watching her with all the arrangements and all these different projects and how she's putting these things together, her and my new mother in love, all the money that they're spending. I'm like, good Lord, all the things that they're doing. And y'all, she's even making my wedding dress. Like how (laughs) exciting is that? She's even making my wedding dress. So mama, you are the spotlight today. I appreciate every single thing that you are doing for me for this wedding, which you have done my entire life. And I look forward to many more years. And I am so honored to be your daughter. Um, if your mother is still living, or if you have a woman in your life that stands in as a mother figure, I want us to celebrate them today. Um, we don't have to wait till Sunday, Mother's Day to do that, but we can take the time out and give them a call, you know, appreciate them, give them praises and, and bless them, take them out to lunch or give them a gift card to their favorite place. And this doesn't even have to just happen in May. Do it at a random time or a couple of random, or I would like to say spontaneous times throughout the year, just to recognize and say, mama, godmother, big mama, granny, whoever it is, I love you. And I appreciate you because that love and appreciation definitely goes a long way. (sighs) Now we've talked about that. Let's go a little bit further into our conversation. This is going to be a very um, casual conversation. I feel like I'm inviting all my friends into the backyard, (laughs) into my room. We're going to have some chit chat today. Um, As you have seen or read the title of this particular episode, it takes a village to raise a woman. And when I was thinking about it, there was an experience, my bridal shower experience that I'm going to share with you all in just a little bit. And it was such a beautiful day that I thought, you know what, I have to share this with the listeners on this show because even though you weren't able to partake in it, I want to let you know what happened. 
a couple of weeks ago. Um, but truly, like, it takes a village to raise a woman. And I say that because who I am today is not a testament of my own doing. It's not. Um, I was modeled before, like people modeled behavior and character and different things that I aspire to as a young girl. And now I'm in my moment of becoming. And it, I, I feel like it's all coming full circle, even though, you know, I'm still young, but I'm, I'm seeing the fruits of uh, the many women that labored before me. And it's so beautiful. And I feel like just everything that I just say was said was encapsulated in a in one moment in a day that we used to celebrate uh, me as the bride to be. And I just want to share that with y'all. So um, my bridal shower. Let's get into it. <laughs> so I initially I wanted to be surprised because I'm I'm learning that it is OK not to know everything that's going on and that you can lay back and you can don't have to know everything. You can be surprised. So I told my mom, the bride, my bridesmaids, my um, maid of honor. I told everyone that was putting their hands in uh, creating this celebration that I did not want to know much of anything that was going on for the shower. Just however you do it, this is what you want to do. I gave them what I wanted to eat because food is important. I gave them the color scheme that I wanted to embody in the event and they ran with it. And my mom, my aunts, my godmother, my best friends, bridesmaids, my sisters, you know, they all came together and they worked so diligently and it was just so beautiful. And I'm honestly the kind of person that is learning how to be celebrated. Um, And I say that because I find joy in serving others. I really do. Um, That's one way that I show love is through uh, action. And so I love to do for other people. Um, But this time I had to learn how to take several seats and just relax let what's going to be done, done, and then just be, just be. (laughs) I thought I was going to have to put something at the end of that sentence, but just be. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. So um, the day before, um, to be completely honest, like um, my, the bridal shower is, was hosted at my parents' house and my parents are in the middle of this project of renovating the the backyard into this beautiful summer spot, right? So we got the pond going and we have these gazebos and this beautiful patio and everything, right? And so the project, like that, um, the rebuilding of the backyard, I haven't really been out there to see it. And so people are working, contractors are coming in and out. And so the day before, uh, my maid of honor, shout out to Taylor, and my mom were just working and cooking and preparing the night before. And a friend of mine, she flew out from um, Los Angeles to come and to help uh, serve and to set up and all those things. So I'm seeing like things being prepared, but I said, okay, Kendra, just back up. And, um, uh, you just get ready for tomorrow. So I'm getting ready for the next day. And so it's the day of the shower y'all. And I, I, it's, it's, it's like what, seven o'clock in the morning and my bridesmaids are all coming to help set up and put things together. And like one by one, they all come up to sneak in and say, you know, Hey Kendra, I'm here and just chit chat. And just to see them come so early to serve and to set up and just to be there and be present that alone was the gift. I could have just, we could have just been done there, but it was just so nice to see their involvement in that. And 
I was juiced. I was getting really excited about like, this is going to be amazing. And so everyone is scrambling and I'm hearing things going on outside. And usually I'm like, when I get up in the morning, I like to whoosh, my curtains, right? I just like to throw them open. So the sun come in and all that good stuff. But I had to leave my curtains closed. So I didn't want to see what was going on outside. Right. So I'm getting ready and everything. People are coming in and checking on me and stuff. And so they say, all right, Kendra, we're ready for, um, for you to come on out. And, uh, when I came downstairs and I opened, well, actually my godmother, she introduced me as Kendra, almost Amos, our bride to be, which was super cute. When I stepped out of the door into the backyard. And mind you, this is the first event we've had in the backyard. I seen the most beautiful setup with, and I'm not crying right now. I'm just, you know, I'm just (laughs) fixing my eyeball. (laughs) I've seen the most beautiful setup with all of the women that I love there. And I began to become so overwhelmed that I started crying and I was lightweight like Kendra are you seriously crying right now like get it together I tried talking myself through it thought you know if I started talking I'd probably stop crying but it just got real ugly (laughs) real wheezy sounding I'm like oh lord Jesus we're not even we hadn't even started the party yet and I'm already crying and In that moment, I was so overwhelmed and I felt a a glimpse of God's love for me through these women. And I think that's what actually got me going um, because I was so full and we hadn't even started yet. And I was just like, thank you, Lord, that even in this moment, you're glorified because the women that are here are women that have sown into me, that have blessed me, that has taught me so many valuable lessons. My good, good girlfriends that have supported me from day one, they were all there with me. And and, and granted, you know, it's, it's still COVID, you know, season, Um, so not every single woman that has contributed to my life was there in that room, but it was definitely a glimpse, a snapshot of who I am and who I want to be. And in that, I was in that, I just thought, God, you love me so much. (laughs) That's what I thought. Like, God, you love me so much that you would give me and gift me with these beautiful women. And y'all, let me tell you. Um, I'm not bougie just for the record. Like my character is not bougie, but I have bougie taste. Okay. Two different things. So when I tell you we had the fine China, we had balloons in the shape of flowers. We had granite tables with crystal and these beautiful gifts. And y'all look, there was a mirror, a gold framed mirror that said, welcome to Kendra's bridal shower. Like the details, the fact that, that these women put in the details, I was like, this is so much. And I'll put some, some pictures and stuff up on my story and y'all can check me out. And um, I'll, I'll show you um, everything that was done. But I just thought to myself like, oh my gosh. And even like, okay, so. Um, y'all know I said that the, I, I gave them my menu, right? Because food is important. I wanted a like a breakfast with Tiffany, but like a breakfast with Kendra type theme. And so we did a brunch and instead of doing blue, we did shades of pink and shades of red, right? My waffles were pink. Like details. And every single detail that I noticed um, for the event, I just counted it as love. And so I'm just looking around at the beauty and I'm just like, oh my gosh, all of this is love, 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 love. Because someone stayed up. Someone spent money for this. 
someone um, thought to be creative and and to set all of these things up for me. And I just thought like, Lord, I'm just so blessed. I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful. And for all those women that did what they did for me that day, I'm like, God, I want to do this for other women. Let's ladies, let's, let's keep this as a chain reaction. Let's bless other women. Let's pour into other people. Let's go above and beyond so they also can just notice, or even if they don't notice, but just putting that love out there, that affection out there, that extra mile out there for someone. And um, there was there are a couple of points and um, that I want to, or a couple of moments I want to share about the shower. Because you can't tell everything that goes on at a bridal shower. If you've been to one, you know what I'm saying, okay? Um, but even the prayer over the food. My cousin, um, and we're like this, she prayed over the food. And not only did she bless the food, but she prayed over the marriage that is soon to come. And then I started crying again. <laughs> I started crying again. I said, Lord, I need to keep these lashes on at least until four o'clock. But even as she was praying, I felt the consuming presence of God, the undeniable saturation, permeating presence of God. And I'm like, this is a bridal shower. And the thing about it is, what I love is that I want my life to reflect Jesus and to bring God glory wherever I am no matter where I am. Though it wasn't a church service, though it wasn't a prayer line, it was a bridal shower, God's presence was still there. He was honored, even in that moment. And just to be amongst women, um, all the wisdom that I received, there were, women there that have been divorced and remarried. And there are women there that have, that are married and we had newlyweds and we had single women and so many different walks of life and so many relational statuses um, that it was so beautiful for them to pour into me. Um, I have perspectives from women that have been married 30 years, perspectives of women that had been married for three weeks for one year. And what we did for the shower was we had them, or I asked that they write down advice um, or prayers for me and that they folded up and put it in a, in a receptacle to where I can receive them and hold them and cherish them and reread them and practice these things that I need to learn as to um, pertaining to me becoming a wife and just all of the wisdom I don't know about you, but I like to sit in the midst of wisdom. I like to get what I need to get from women that have experience, um, even if it's just a little bit, because I don't know everything. I can't make it on my own. And the fact that I have people pouring into me, it was absolutely beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, it really was. And as I reflected on them, all of the women there, and even the ones that weren't there, that they are a bouquet of women that I aspire to be. From my mom, to my aunts, to my godmother, to the women from my church, to my um, my sister friends and my bridesmaids. And y'all, if you know who you are and you are a part of my village, I am talking about you, girl. And I love you and I appreciate you. And through you, I felt God's love. Through you, I felt God's covering. Through you, I felt God's blessing. And I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm extremely grateful for that, that when I get in the presence of women, like personally and my advice to every woman that is listening to this 
get in the presence of women that will uplift you. Get in the presence of women that will actually cover you in prayer and not talk about you on the phone. If if I can't call you up and be like, I need you to pray for me and cover me, then you ain't it. I need to re-up on my Fenty real quick. But if I call you and you can't pray for me, then you're not it. It's not personal. It ain't. But I need women that are going to be able to intercede. I need women that are going to be able to pray, to cover me, to teach me, to correct me in love. I'll say that one again, to correct me in love. Because it's really dangerous (laughs) when you have folks around you that are yes men or yes women that agree with everything that you do, that agree with every decision you make, even when you're wrong. Mm -mm. That's not character building. That's reinforcing bad behavior. And I can't tell you how many times I've been corrected, but it was done in love. Because they want to see the best for me. They want to see me grow. They want to see me excel. I remember, um, there's some, I can't even, I'm not even going to get started. I have many times I've been corrected, but just know I've been corrected and I receive it. Even though it may sting a little bit, I receive it. Um, and another thing for all of my listeners out there, don't forsake the wisdom of the elders. There are a lot of older people that are the younger generation, uh, millennials and Gen Z's forget about. Just because you got salt and pepper on the top of your head does not mean you don't have wisdom burning on the inside. Let us not forget the wisdom of our grandmothers and our great grandmothers and our aunts and our great aunts and these the mothers of the church and our whatever your community is. Let us not forget that. Because they're so wise. So when I was younger, I honestly loved hanging around older women. I mean, even like looking at my friends, all of my friends are older than me. um, Because the way that I roll is, if I see something in you that I like, that I have not accomplished yet, I'm going to keep you around. I'm going to be up under you so I can learn how to get there too. I've always been like that. Like my friends, if I'm in high school and I have a couple friends in college, like I have someone that's able to teach me stuff or I'm hanging around um, a woman that is an entrepreneur and she can teach me things. I'm hanging around um, someone that has that runs their household in a beautiful <laughs> um, tranquil way. And I'm hanging around all these women and receiving all these things Um Don't surround yourself with women that'll tear you down or women that tear other people down. That is a red flag run. Anybody that'll call your phone to gossip, get rid of them. Anyone that'll, that has the spirit of, of strife and likes to fight and, and argue and fuss and roll up and pull up on people, you cut them loose because they are not fruitful. They will not benefit you at all. They will not bless you. They will not cover you. Now, I'm not saying, you know, there's there are some folks and there are some reasons and situations to where you have to do what you need to do. But I'm just saying, like, you know, people that just like to fight, like to pick fights, like to do too much. Um, cut them because the the women that you hang around reflect your character. The women that you hang around and that you entertain reflect your character and who you truly are at the core. So what does that say about you? There is a scripture that I want to read as um, we come to a close. And it is Proverbs 14 verse 1. This is the ESV version. And it reads, the wisest of women builds their houses. But the folly with her own hands tears it down. Wise women build their houses. 
but a foolish woman will tear it down. And all of the women are going back to the shower that were sitting there were wise women. Women that I've seen build their homes, even in the midst of chaos and strife in life and life happenings, build their homes. But the Bible says that the foolish woman tears it down. So which one do you want to be? I'm choosing wisdom. (laughs) I'll take wisdom for 200, Alex. I'm choosing wisdom. Because that foolishness, it just comes with so much trouble. And I want to be a blessing to the women in my life, to myself, to my husband, to be. I want to be a blessing. And... That comes with learning how to be a blessing. I promise y'all, after this whole wedding experience, like people have blessed me so much. It makes no sense. I'm thinking like, how how do I pay these people back? How do I, you know, pay back one good deed with another? And God is like, just be blessed. Just be blessed. I'll give you opportunity to. And I promise you, <laughs> when I get the opportunity to bless somebody, the way I have been blessed during this whole wedding process, I'm doing it, period. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Like, because it feels so good to be a blessing. And God blesses those who give generously and gives um, just with a glad heart. And I'm like, man, I want to be a part of that blessing. Like we read a couple of weeks ago in 2 Corinthians um, chapter, was it chapter 9? I believe it was it was either six or nine. Um, but y'all, I am definitely going to get on that train. I'm trying to find that scripture. Yes, second Corinthians nine, um, verses six through eight. Y'all read that. It's a blessing. <sighs> so I hope y'all enjoyed the little story time. <laughs> um and If you are a woman, just evaluate, or even if you are a man, evaluate the people that you are around because they definitely reflect the character that you have. And it says a lot about who you are as a person. And if you need someone um, to pray for you, to find people like that, let me know if you need some prayer. We can get y'all hooked up with communities of people that will support you um, because it is a blessing to be a blessing. And we can't do this Christian walk with by ourselves. We can't do it. We have to have people around you um, in order to achieve that. And closing words, I am just looking so forward um, into becoming a wife, into becoming the woman that God has called me to be. Like, this is such an amazing and beautiful season. And I'm I'm praying blessings for anyone that is pl- planning a wedding. Like, it's crazy hectic. Um, I feel your struggle. I feel your struggle. But it is a great journey. Um, and thank you to all of the mothers and and beautiful women that have been a part of my life and has blessed me. I I look up to you. I bless you. I honor you. And I pray the best. I pray that it doesn't end here, but that God blesses you uh, more than you expected. All right. Well, let us go into prayer with all hearts and minds clear. Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Thank you for everything that you have done and who you are. Thank you for giving us community and people that are able to be a part of a village to raise a phenomenal woman, phenomenal women. And God, I'm I'm just praying over those that um, have a hard time finding community. God, I pray that you put in their paths or remind them or bring back relationships that are fruitful to them and to disconnect them from anything that is harmful to their growth. God, I pray that you be glorified and honored and lifted in Jesus name. Amen. Y'all one, y'all are just amazing. Every single week you come in and you listen to your girl on this mic. Um, y'all be blessed. Have a great week. 
if you want to keep up with me, you can head on over to uh, um, Instagram on, on Instagram and you can follow me at underscore create with Kendra. That's create with a K. We can connect there. Also, if you have any comments, prayer requests or topics of discussion that you would like to hear, I encourage you to go to www.unassociated.com and submit anything y'all want to talk about. All right, y'all. Until next week, beautiful people. Be blessed.